السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وصلى الله على سيد الأولين والآخرين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد My dear viewers, welcome to another live edition of Gardens of the Pious Today's episode is number 488 <coughs> in the series of Riyadh al-Salihin by Imam Nawawi. May Allah have mercy on him. Today, insha'Allah, we'll have another chapter in the course of fasting. Chapter number 231. Babu fadli man fattara sa'iman wa fadli al-sa'im al-ladhi yu'kalu indahu wa dua al-akili lil-ma'kuli indahu. So the chapter covers the merits of providing food for a person who is fasting to break the fast on and making dua for the provider and the merits of a fasting person who hosts people who are not fasting and he provides them with food as well. The first hadith in the chapter is hadith number 1265. عن زيد بن خالد الجهني رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من فطر صائما كان له مثل أجره غير أنه لا ينقص أو لا ينقص من أجر الصائم شيء okay. So if it is لا ينقص then لا ينقص من أجر الصائم شيء and if it is لا ينقص then لا ينقص من أجر الصائم شيء the hadith is collected by Imam Tirmidhi and it's a Hassan hadith Zayd ibn Khalid al-Juhani may Allah be pleased with him narrated that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said whoever gives iftar iftar is a food for a person who is fasting to break their fast upon. Whoever gives iftar to one who is fasting, he will have a reward like this without detracting from the reward of the fasting person in the slightest. So the hadith assures us there is an equal reward of the reward of a fasting person Whenever you offer a food for a fasting person to break their fast upon. Now we will discuss some details concerning the hadith. Whether this food is a whole meal or it would be sufficient to give a fasting person a few dates, a glass of milk, uh, some samosa, snacks, chocolate, something very light but it's not considered a meal. Or if a person is given a whole meal to a fasting person, what does the hadith address exactly? Does it address, does it have to be a full meal? Does it have to include meat, chicken, or fish, rice, food, uh, dessert? Uh, what is it exactly? Also, before that, we want to discuss that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wanted this Ummah to cooperate in doing what is good in achieving piety and righteousness you find that in the second ayah of Surah Al-Ma'idah Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala instructed the audience, the believers by saying وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى Help one another 
assist each other to achieve bir and taqwa. Bir, piety, and taqwa, righteousness. So if anyone is doing anything which is good, help him out. And for helping him out, you receive a similar word. The other hadith says, Addalu ala al khayri kafa'ilih. Addalu ala al khayri lahu mithlu ajri fa'ilih. Two different narrations. So helping people to do something good, to achieve righteousness, guiding them to it, secures you a similar word of everyone who will act upon your guidance. You taught people, you said tomorrow is Monday. And fasting is recommended on Monday. On your social media, you spread the word. You guys remember to fast tomorrow is going to be Thursday. And that's a day on which our deeds will be presented before Allah. Somebody who is looking forward to watch a movie. Or to chat with a girl. And he happened by accident to come across your reminder. So the reminder brought to his attention that, Hey man, I've done a lot of bad deeds, a lot of sins. You know what? Let me fast tomorrow. This is a, you know, he thinks this is a sign from Allah. This is a signal from Allah. He doesn't know you, but it's a post on your page. A random message you send to random recipients. Subhanallah. So he fasted. You don't know how many people actually uh, received your message and how many people opened it up and read it and how many people fasted because of your reminder. On the other hand, some people are, mashallah, very righteous, but they were busy. They got too busy with other commitments, so they totally forgot tomorrow is 13th, 14th, and 15th. There came your message, which was delivered, and it reached haphazardly to a big number of people. Some of whom were very keen actually to fast, voluntary fasting, but they totally forgot tomorrow is the 13th or tomorrow is the uh, 9th or the 10th of Muharram. So because of your reminder, said, Alhamdulillah, Allah reminded me. So they fasted tomorrow. They will receive a reward for their fasting. And you will receive a similar word for reminding them without diminishing the word of the person who observed the act itself. Addallu ala al-khayri kafa'ilih. Before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala receives the same exact word, without diminishing the word of those who acted upon his reminder, her guidance, and so on. People are fasting. So you hosted them and you said, everybody, tomorrow, inshallah, is Monday. Uh, look, why don't we fast? And I'm inviting you for iftar, your colleagues at work. I'm bringing sandwiches. I'm bringing Chick-fil-A. I'm bringing something, you know, for us to break our fast. Some people would come and enjoy just the, the free meal. And some people would say, yeah, it's a, it's a good chance to fast. So they fasted. So you receive exactly the same reward of every person who fasted. And those who did not fast, you will be rewarded for feeding them. The reward for feeding is not only for feeding the poor, but for feeding anyone. Okay? In Ramadan, in our community in Texas, before Ramadan, we make a schedule. 30 days. 30 families or more, one family each day, they take care of feeding the whole community. It's once a, a year. It's not really a big deal, especially for those who live in the States. It's very affordable. It's not really a big deal. Food is not very expensive. As a matter of fact, it is cheap compared to other countries. So they take care of feeding the other, order the food or they cook for the community. People will be competing and fighting. I want to take that day. I want to, okay, two families can take one day and so on. So all the community members, they get together to break their fast on daily basis in Ramadan. Why? Because in the beginning, we reminded everyone, look, we can all break our fast at home, but this is such a good opportunity that we break our fast, we get together, our kids get together, and also each and every one of us will double and triple the reward for their fasting. If you're fasting 29 days or 30 days of Ramadan, that's for you, that's good. But if you happen to feed the community, 60 people, 120 people, 200, 300, 500 people, then 500 days of fasting have been added to the scale of your good deeds. مَنْ فَطَّرَ صَائِمًا كَانَ لَهُ مِثْلُ أَجْرِهِ 
غير أنه لا ينقص من أجر الصائم شيئا he confirmed without diminishing the reward of a fasting person not because you give me food so anyway I'm fasting and the reward for my fasting is secured is guaranteed alhamdulillah wa shukrullah so sometimes in the masjid even if there is no iftar there is voluntary fasting everyone is having some dates he brings from home or buys from the street and then when we come to the masjid I give my day to somebody else and accept his dates or whatever he's bringing to break the fast on why so that I will give him a similar word for mine and I will take a similar word of his fasting increasing the balance of the good deed for each one of us and subhanallah it's not affecting you it is increasing the compassion it is increasing the affection it is increasing the love among the members of the community and raising the awareness of the importance of benefiting others as well it's not affecting me so you benefit others and you benefit as well so nowadays our children before Maghrib the whole day they are fasting nowadays Ramadan is in summer a very great practice that distracts their attention from the heat and the length of the day after Asr they are planning who is going to take the dates and whether they are going to empty to uh, extract the seeds from the dates or put some nuts in it and this and this and that to present it to the community members in the masjid right at the time when the adhan is called so the kids the youth are very keen as well to share their word why because they see everybody is concerned they see everybody is concerned so this is an excellent practice rather than saying that you have to fast and if you don't fast you go to hell and you will be thirsty on the day of judgment look share their word talk and address the virtues not only of fasting but also of feeding a person who's fasting the question is now the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said man fattara sa'iman kana lahu mithlu ajrihi ghayra annahu la yanqusu min ajri as-sa'im shay'a we got it shaykh alhamdulillah there are so many different narrations in this regard and um, i want to share with you that all those narrations are not like those sound ahadith most of them are weak ahadith but that will not affect the fact that feed in a fasting person you will be rewarded no doubt maybe the difference is concerning how much how much reward but also i started the episode with mentioning other ahadith talking about addallu ala al khayri ka fa'ili sound ahadith to assure you even if this hadith is weak but it is supported by another hadith so go ahead and do it go ahead and do it how much food just a few qajur dates tamr rutab or um you know like in the haram mashallah ramadan first 10 days of the month of dhul hijjah and those occasions such as uh, the 9th and the 10th and the 11th of muharram mondays and thursdays you find people spreading what is called sufra i actually made a few videos a couple times when i was there and i showed you how people Masha'Allah, all of that is for free. Who's giving the food? We don't know. It doesn't matter. Some good doers. Some people are sending the money from overseas. He says, just make a sufra, spread the table, you know, for people to break their fast. Dates, yogurt, some condiments, little piece of bread, uh, coffee, kahwa, and all of that. As a matter of fact, that's a meal. That's a meal by itself. And that's why after we eat, in the 10-15 minutes between Adhan and Iqama, after we pray, that's it. I don't want to leave the masjid. I'm already uh, set. Zamzam is next to me and I've eaten enough. Plenty of dates and uh, yogurt uh, and, and bread. Alhamdulillah, shukrullah. So that's a meal. There are some ahadith, also weak ahadith, which explain in detail how much reward if you give uh, anything for a fasting person to break the fast upon. And what is the maximum? If you give them food to eat to their fill until they are full. So for innocence, here is a hadith. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, مَنْ فَطَّرَ صَائِمًا عَلَى مَذْقَةِ لَبَنٍ أَوْ تَمْرَةٍ أَوْ شَرْبَةِ مَاءٍ هَذَا جَزَاؤُهُ جَزَاؤُهُ عِتْقُ رَقَبَةٍ MashaAllah. So whoever 
gives a fasting person a sip of milk, a sip of water, a date or a few dates uh, in order to break their fast, the reward is similar to freeing a slave neck. MashaAllah. And the other hadith says, وَمَنْ أَشْبَعَ صَائِمًا And whoever gives him the food until he eats to his fill. خلاص الحمد لله لا أجل له مسلكاً I ate it was such a very delicious food like meat and rice and you know plenty of food so I ate to my fill so the reward is subhanallah uh, the Prophet sallallahu says in, in this hadith that Allah the Almighty will forgive him his sins وسقاه الله من حوض رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم شربة لا يظمأ بعدها حتى يدخل الجنة من أشبع صائما كان مغفرة له لذنوبه whoever gives a food for a fasting person to eat to the fill then it will wipe out all his sins remember we always said all the hadith which talk about forgiveness for all the sins referring to the minor sins not the kabair not to the major sins not to حقوق العباد or the rights of others the minor sins then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow him to drink from the basin of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa on the Day of Judgment. And whoever will drink from the basin, from the hawd of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa will never ever e experience any uh, thirst afterward. وَكَانَ لَهُ مِثْلُ أَجْرِ الصَّائِمِ And furthermore, you will see the word similar to the fasting person. Great reward, brothers and sisters. That applies to anyone, whether the fasting person was a relative or a stranger, rich or poor. In some of the Muslim countries, I see and I still see something, Alhamdulillah, shukla, it's still maintained until, until now, since I was a student. Whenever we are in college and we are rushing to go home so that we can break our fast with the family, don't worry about it. You're stuck in the bus, in the train, uh, in, in any transportations. You will find people throwing food at you in plastic bags, meals, drink, food, uh, from the windows, or stop in the vehicle. Everybody must eat, and they will insist, you got to take it from me. Why? Those people are competing with each other over the reward of the fasting person, and there are plenty of fasting people. So those who didn't reach home yet, they are not nearby any masjid, on the streets, they will find free food as well. They also spread tables, 500 seats, 1,000 seats in, um, in a big tent. And they invite people who are standing by, palestarians, people who are walking and they didn't go home yet, next to a bus station. Everybody should come and eat. Well, great. But also, when I make certain that I particularly feed poor people, who cannot afford the meal, there is extra reward in that. There is an extra reward. And when those people happen to be relatives as well, there is even extra reward, there is double reward. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the as-sadaqatu ala al-ba'id, one who is not related to you and you give him in a charity, you receive a full reward for giving in a charity. Wa ala al-qareebi ajrun wa silah. But when you give this charity, this food or this gift, to somebody who happened to be in need and also a relative, then you receive double reward. The reward for giving in a charity and the reward for upholding the ties of kinship. So uh, the hadith, brothers and sisters, tells us that we should compete with each other in doing what is good, in feeding those who are fasting, especially those who are fasting, in order to secure a reward similar to them. A person may be not able to fast, neither Ramadan nor even voluntary fasting. But you have the chance to earn a similar reward for fasting through feeding the fasting uh, people. The following hadith, you know, talking about fasting and thirsty, makes me thirsty. Even though it's night time. Alhamdulillah. Hadith number 1266. An Ummi Umarat al Ansariya radiallahu anha. 
أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم دخل عليها فقدمت إليه طعاما فقال كلي فقالت إني صائمة فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الصائمة تصلي عليه الملائكة إذا أكل عنده حتى يفرغ وربما قال حتى يشبع رواه الترمذي أجين دات حسن حديث كلكت باي إمام ترمذي narrated أم عمارة الأنصاري الأنصاري ليلي may Allah be pleased with her she narrated that once the messenger of Allah peace be upon him visited us and he served him some food so the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم asked me to eat as well I replied well I'm fasting O Prophet of Allah so he peace be upon him said well when people eat by a person who is fasting the angels keep asking Allah's forgiveness for that person until they have had the fill and now it's my turn to explain the hadith in Arabic it's a lot easier to understand okay and when you translate it sometimes the translation needs explanation fact number one we know that whenever it is mandatory fasting then if you are traveling if you're musafir you are given the concession to skip fasting but the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in this incident was in musafir that's that was in Medina, Um Umara al Ansariya, the Ansari woman. Okay, so that means that wasn't the mandatory fasting, it wasn't during Ramadan. Correct. The Prophet was fasting one of those days which he fasted voluntarily. And when he visited Um Umara al Ansariya, she fixed him food to eat. So the Prophet said, What about you? You're not going to eat? You're not eating? She said, well, I'm fasting, O Prophet of Allah. And keep in mind that even the Sahaba at the time of the Prophet وسلم, wanted to conceal their good deeds and not to show it to anyone in order to secure maximum sincerity, in order to secure its full word. Okay? Only when the Prophet وسلم, asked her, you're not eating. What about you? She said, well, I'm fasting. Okay, we know that the sunnah, when you have guests and you're fasting, you can break your fast and eat with them in order to encourage them to eat and give them the proper hospitality. But what if the fasting person does not mind whatsoever? As a matter of fact, it will make him happier to keep your fasting so that you will receive the reward and he will eat and that would not make them embarrassed to eat then continue fasting only if you sense that those guys are not very much close to me he's not my brother she's not my sister they are not my family members so I'm kind of shy if I prepare the food and I say to the guests eat what about you while well, I'm fasting I doubt that the guests would really eat or if he eats would eat properly because he's kind of embarrassed you're fasting and I missed up your day and so on but if the person does not mind and he insists that you should continue fasting alhamdulillah so with Umm Umar al-Ansariya the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said something very pleasant he said well if a fasting person like in your case and people have come and eaten in his presence mashallah you're fasting and you're offering me food so guess what? The angels will keep making dua for you, will keep seeking forgiveness for you as long as the guests are eating or until they eat their fill. Hatta yafro, until they finish from eating or until uh, they have eaten their fill. So the hadith says, Um Umara radiallahu anha said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, well I'm fasting, so he said peace be upon him, when people eat by the person who's observing fasting, the angels keep making dua and istighfar for the fasting person until they have, uh, they have had their fill or eaten their fill. Beautiful. So we have learned from this hadith as well. Then you are with the choice. 
to keep fasting but to feel and honor your uh, guests or um, if you think if you assume that the guests will feel embarrassed to eat they you guys are not that close so it's okay to break your fast in order to eat with your guests and honor them the following hadith will be talking about the supplication that a guest should invoke Allah for the benefit of the host upon eating whether fasting or not fasting breakfast lunch dinner or snacks or whatever inshallah we'll begin discussing those supplications when we return back from the short break we'll be back inshallah in a couple of minutes please stay tuned <laughs> عد الله لهم جنات ومغفرة وأجرا عظيما. Brothers and sisters, Allah has prepared for us gardens and beautiful things in the hereafter for those who do certain deeds. So please, my brothers and sisters, join me with this program, inshaAllah ta'ala, to talk about the rewards for everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed us to do or our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu has encouraged us to do for those who pray, fast, or do certain deeds in our face, bi'iznillahi ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all what we do. Look at the barak and the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put into this farm. When the cloud comes, it rains just for him, subhanAllah. When my brother goes and works, and he provides for me, and I just sit back and I, and I worship. So they have it divided, where one works and the other one worships. Umar ibn Khattab, radiallahu anhu, he said, Akhuq khayrun mink, that your brother is better than you. He was a man who devoted his life solely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, worshiping Allah day and night, and here, He's accused, he's falsely accused of fornicating. Three people that Allah loves. And as a Muslim, as soon as you hear this, you're like, who are these three? I wonder who they are. How can I be from them? Who are they? That these are things that you, you'll find it, the people who are attached to the dunya sometimes, it's not a manly thing. It's more of a feminine type thing, it's a soft thing. That Allah said, whoever strives for us, that verily we should guide them to our ways, and indeed Allah will be with the doers of good. So if you're from the doers of good, ones who are striving, Allah is going to be with you, He's going to assist you, He's going to help you in Shalom time. He would come every night, and He would give this milk to His parents first, and then give the milk to the rest of the family. One night He was late, He came home late. So what does He do? He holds that milk and won't let anybody drink it. Not his children, not his wife, until his parents wake up in the morning and they drink it first. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. There are so many stars around us nowadays in all fields, but there are real stars. On the course of 30 episodes, we'll be looking deeply into the lives of 30 companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this generation that received the light directly from him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they saw the implementation of the Quran by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They lived it and they passed it on to the next generation. We will be looking into their lives. We'll be looking into the life of Khadija radiallahu anha, Uthman, Abu Bakr, Umar, Ali, and so many other beautiful names and shiny stars. This is all on Huda TV. Join me.
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Our phone numbers are as follows beginning with the record 002-023855-132. Alternatively, I could 002-01005469323 and the WhatsApp numbers are record 001347-80625. And finally, I record 001361489 uh, We have Sister uh, Fawziya from the UK. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Fawziya. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Salah, how are you? Alhamdulillah, thank you for asking. I'm doing great. Alhamdulillah, thank you, Sister Fawziya. Go ahead. Great, brother. I have a few questions to ask today. Okay. Um, my, can I continue? Please. Okay. So my first question is, uh, I spoke to you, I think, yesterday or day before yesterday about Hajj for my late father. How can I do Hajj for him? And then you said, uh, first you need to do your own Hajj. And uh, I was actually wondering that I do not have any mahram for Hajj. Uh, so in that case, what do I need? I mean, I have a brother, but he's busy with his family, so he actually does not want to go to Hajj with me, For let's say, if I plan for next year. So can I do Hajj with my sister cousin and her son? She has a big son uh, or her husband, so would that be okay? So this is my first question. My second question is, uh, well, is my cousin's son my mahram? This is my second question. And sorry, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, and my third question is, uh, uh, when I'm stuck, let's say if I go to a shopping or at work or somewhere and I'm stuck in a traffic and nowadays in UK, uh, the prayer times are too close. So Maghrib is so short. And uh, sometimes, uh, you know, the Maghrib happens when I'm stuck in the traffic or in a mall somewhere, unplanned, obviously. Uh, so uh, in that case, uh, how would I pray? It's a prayer time, but I don't have voodoo. So can I still pray or should I come home and do my Qadha prayer? Okay. Um, and my last question is, which is optional. Uh, I am your such a big fan, and uh, I would uh, love to know a little bit about, more about you, where you're from, and you, you have so much knowledge, alhamdulillah, so if you let me know what have you achieved, what courses, and, and you know, a little bit about yourself, it would be, but that's optional, that's not, you have, you have to tell, that's all. Thank you, Sister Fawziya from the UK. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Abu Ridwan from the USA. Assalamu alaikum. How are you, brother? I'm doing fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. Alhamdulillah. Brother, I have a question, two questions. Go ahead. Uh, the first one is, we have a restaurant in the United States called Red Lobster. They don't yeah. serve pork, but here's the sad thing. They put beer battered fish. And, and my question is this. Can we use the same fryer? Can we use the same fryer that they use the beer battered fish in? Oh, so they fry they fry what in the same oil, which is haram? They they, they sell they they fry beer battered fish in a fryer, and I'm asking, can I use that? Can we eat food that is not beer battered but used in the same fryer? Okay, well, and I'm, my أخي, أخي and my second Rudu, question is أخي أبو Rudwan. Yes. I got your question, but I'm not sure what kind of fish that they fry in the frying pan or in the oil, which is haram. What kind of fish is it? Oh, no, the fish is okay, but they put beer on, on the batter of it, the breading, on, put, one, on, on some of the fish. They put beer. And I guess what I'm trying to figure out is you said they put if beer I can on eat some other of the fish, fish that's they, fried there. Yeah, they put alcohol on some of the fish. That's correct. Okay. Okay. I got your question. Okay. Well, what is your second question about Rudwan? Thank you, brother. The second question is this. Uh, if a student goes to college, and can he take a loan from the federal government? Okay. Got your question. 
So, uh, Sister Fawzia from the UK, she now wants to perform Hajj for herself so that she can perform Hajj for her late father, but she doesn't have a mahram. Or let's say that she has, but he's not willing to go. According to Imam Malik and Imam Shafi'i, it's okay for a woman to travel for Hajj or Umrah without the mahram if she travels with a group, with a company whom we can describe as in Arabic, Suhbatun Amina, safe company. You know, most of the cases, especially the companies, uh, travel agencies, which, uh, you know, are located in North America or in, in the UK, you know, because the law is very strict. So they take care of their customers. So if your cousin is going with you and uh, some family members and you're going with a company, in this case, inshallah, it is permissible. Your cousin's son isn't your mahram. If he was your nephew, like your own sister's son, yes, he's your mahram because you can never marry him. But the cousin's son, the cousin himself, can I marry my cousin? Is it halal? Yes, it's halal. I know that a lot of people say gross man, but I, you know, we're talking about halal and haram. Is it halal? Yeah, the Prophet ﷺ was married to his own cousin, Zainab bint Jahsh. Ali ibn Abi Talib and Fatima, radiyallahu anhuma, were cousins, correct? Uh, so that is the answer to your uh, questions, Sister Fawzia. Uh, Abu Ridwan, I think my biography is already on our website for the information. Uh, it is the right of the people to know whom they're listening to, uh, what kind of um, authentication does he have in order to give fatwa or to teach. So all of that we will find, inshallah, on our Huda TV website. Abu Ridwan from the USA asked about dining at a place where uh, I know I know the store and I, I used to dine there a lot but not eat the fried fish I wouldn't go to Red Lobster for fried fish uh, you know uh, rather for a butterfly shrimp or something like that anyway so some fish they marinated in alcohol and they fry it in the same uh, oil and now I'm not eating this fish. I don't want it with alcohol. Number one, it is absolutely forbidden to deliberately marinate or soak or add alcohol to any food or any drink. It's haram. Even if it is a small percentage, even if it is 1% or less than 1%, it is haram. The question is, what if it is already added? Well, there is a variety of food, then it's haram for us as well to eat it. You don't say it evaporates, a small percentage remains. This is food, this is not medication. The medication is different, okay? So in this case, I would happily uh, request the uh, waiter to make sure, uh, to make certain that it is not fried in the same frying pan or frying uh, oil where they have cooked anything which is marinated in alcohol. And uh, in, in many cases, uh, Brother Abu Rudwan, I have demanded that from the waiter and from the restaurant owners or manager, and they have honored that. When I say it's against my religion, I don't say I'm allergic. I say it's against my religion. Okay, so they bring a new a frying pan and they, uh, and they fry it uh, or they cook it in it. If this is the case, that is permissible. دَعْ مَا يَرِيبُكَ إِلَى مَا لَا يَرِيبُكَ and teach your kids the same. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, leave alone anything which puts you in doubt to that which is you're certain of. You're certain it is absolutely halal. So now, inshallah, one day when Abu Ridwan invites us in the States and we eat at his place, not necessarily at Red Lobster, and he's offering us fish and, you know, they, they even have uh, shrimp biryani, you know. So the biryani is... Is, is in everything. So they have shrimp in the biryani. So we can eat seafood with the biryani. And after we've eaten, alhamdulillah wa shukrullah, we want to tell him thank you. What to say? The hadith teaches us. Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu anh narrated an an nabiyyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam jaa ila Sa'ad ibn Ubadat radiyallahu anhu fa jaa bi khubzin wa zayt fa akala thumma qala an nabiyyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam أفطر عندكم الصائمون أكل طعامكم الأبرار وصلت عليكم الملائكة. So the messenger of Allah peace be upon him visited Sa'd ibn Ubadah. May Allah be pleased with him. 
And Sa'ad hosted him, and he brought some bread and oil. When we say oil, most likely it's an olive oil. And the Prophet ate. Then he, peace be upon him, said, he supplicated to Allah and invoked Allah for the verses of the host, Sa'ad ibn Ubadah, saying, Aftara indakum usa'imun. May fasting people break their fast with you. Secondly, Akala ta'amakum al abrar. May the righteous people eat your food. Thirdly, Sallat alaykum malaika. And may the angels send blessings upon you. So some of the, the, this, these are three supplications. What is the meaning of aftara indakum asa'imun? Is it like some sort of news or supplication? Like we've been fasting and we broke our fast at your place? This is not supplication. Aftara indakum asa'imun. Yani a prayer or a dua. May always the fasting people get to break their fast in your place. May you be capable to feed the fasting people. And what happens when you feed the fasting people? You get the promised reward, which is a reward similar to everyone who's fasting. MashaAllah. A question for you, Sheikh. Do I have to be fasting to recite this supplication? We visited Abu Rudwan and it was noon. He invited us for lunch. So we ate. Not khallun wa zayt. It was in vinegar and olive oil. It was in uh, bread and, uh, and oil. It was seafood, mashallah. Since you like the seafood. And we supplicated for you. Do we have to be fasting? No. We don't have to be fasting. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks. We say, Aftara indakum usa'imun. Wa akala ta'amakum al abrar. May always the righteous people eat from your food. The Prophet ﷺ advised one of the Sahaba before he said, لا يدخل بيتك إلا لا تصاحب إلا مؤمنا ولا يأكل طعامك إلا تقي. Make sure that your com your company, your companions, your friends are always of the believers, and those who enter your house and eat from your food, الأتقياء التقي, the righteous people, and you are those who are around you. I am. Those who are around me, I am my companions, my friends, my peer. Whom do I hang around with? Somebody is proposing to my daughter. I want to find out about him. Once I said his name, oh, mashallah, you know, he's friend of uh, so and so and so and so. A person, I was out of the States and somebody asked me another uh, about another person. I picked up the phone and said, where are you from? He said, he's from New Jersey. Okay, which masjid do you go to? He said, I visit this masjid. So I picked up the phone. I talked to the imam and to the shuk here. And yes, yes, we see him. This guy, the height and with the beard, his blue eyes, blonde hair. Yes, we know him. He's a good person. He's quiet. So I ask those who know him, those who are hanging around him. When you hang around righteous people, that's a sign that you are yourself a good person or trying to be good. And when you're hanging around drug dealers, and those who smoke uh, weed, what do you expect? Of course, refused. Because how do I know that you are not one of them? So, May the angels pray and supplicate for you with the blessings. Um, we're done with this uh, hadith. And we have a new chapter, which is known as I'tikaf. Al-I'tikaf is sunnah, is neither mandatory, nor um, is it uh, fard. And it is not just relating to Ramadan. Al-I'tikaf is something to be observed all year round. As a matter of fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated in Surah Al-Baqarah that he instructed Ibrahim alayhi salam and his son Ismail. So this is way before Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, أن طهر بيتي both of you you and your son Ismail طهر بيتي للطائفين والعاكفين والركع السدود purify my house and the area around for those who are performing tawaf for those who are observing i'tikaf and those who are bound down and prostrating themselves so i'tikaf is a great act of worship where a person enters the masjid any masjid in which the masjid offers the five daily prayers in jama'ah and the Jumu'ah prayer. You cannot do i'tikaf 
in a musalla where we only offer you know some of the daily prayers but in the evening people leave work so don't pray there or a little musalla at the airport or a musalla at work a prayer hall or a chapel no it must be a masjid jama'ah so whenever it is Jum'ah, you don't have to leave the masjid to go to attend the Jum'ah somewhere else. Because once you intend to enter the masjid and stay in i'tikaf, you got to stay in i'tikaf in worship. Or even if you're just sitting there, quiet, not doing anything. But whenever it is the prayer time, you offer the prayer. And uh, by that, you are in an act of worship. Whether you're praying or just sitting in the masjid. There is no minimum... Uh, time for i'tikaf. Some of the scholars said at least one day and night, and some said at least one day or one night. But the right view is, and this is the opinion of the vast majority of the scholars, is any time. An hour, it's okay. Less than an hour, it's okay. One moment, it is okay. The best time to observe i'tikaf, brothers and sisters, is in Ramadan. Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu anhu narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa observed i'tikaf uh, like in a little tent inside his masjid in the first 10 days of Ramadan. Then he did it again in the middle 10 days of Ramadan. Then again he made it in the last 10 days of Ramadan because he was anticipating observing the greatest night, the grand night or Laylat al-Qadr. Then when he was informed that it is in the last 10 nights of Ramadan, he used to observe i'tikaf on a regular basis on the last 10 days and nights of Ramadan. But the last year before his death, sallallahu alayhi wa he observed i'tikaf for 20 days. Middle and last 10 days and nights of Ramadan. Can women observe i'tikaf? Yes. Men and women are alike in this condition. But provided security against any fitna. So a young girl doesn't have a mahram and come in i'tikaf and going in and out. Where are you going? You're staying out of your house by yourself. And uh, you know nowadays, uh, especially in our masajid in the West, uh, you see some women walking in wearing tight pants. This is how they dress up outside. And when they walk in, they, dress the, they wear the isdal or hijab inside the masjid. So if that is causing fitna, because, hey, we are destining ourselves from the whole world, from business, from money, from restaurants, from, we want to take a break, we want to meditate, we want to contemplate, we want to recite Quran, so we don't want anything to mess up our i'tikaf. So men and women are alike in this condition in case of security against any uh, fitna. The other ayah which refers to i'tikaf was in Surah Al-Baqarah, in the course of discussing about fasting, ayah uh, number 187, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in a segment of this ayah, وَلَا تُبَاشِرُوهُنَّ وَأَنْتُمْ عَاكِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ And you should not embrace your wives while you are in a state of i'tikaf. While you are in a state of i'tikaf. And whether this applies only to the condition of while being in the masjid or when you happen to go home for a necessity, and what allows a person to leave the mu'takaf and leave uh, to his house or to answer the call of nature or to grab something to eat. All of that will be discussed insha'Allah in the next episode when we begin with discussing chapter number 232, Babu al fi Ramadan. Until then, I leave you all in the care and protection of the Almighty Allah. Aqulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa sallallahu على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Forgiving all about it in paradise Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling the best with the cheapest price So why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about
of hell and paradise, worshipping cows, fire and stones, selling their best with the cheapest price.